Babangida survived Gideon Oka's school by the whiskers. He almost lost his life. When he recovered from the attack, one of the first things he did was to have a meeting with Julius Bega PLC and begin the process of the award of contract for the construction of a more protected, sophisticated, but highly restricted residence and workplace for the president of the country. In back in history, we will take you back in time to the events that occurred in the historical past. In this edition, we will take you back to the reasons General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, military head of state of Nigeria, moved to Asorok Villa in Abuja barely two years before the end of his administration. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida was Nigeria's military head of state from 1985 to 1993. For the whole of 1985, 1986, 1987, 1988, 1989, and 1990, Babangida lived in and worked from Dodan Barracks in Lagos. At that time, Lagos was the federal capital of the Federation of Nigeria, and the office of the president was located in Dodan Barracks. Dodan Barracks is one of the oldest military barracks in Nigeria. Past military heads of state also lived here and worked from here. Being a military barracks, several military officers and men, together with their families, also lived in the barracks. This being the case, there was frequent movement of people into and out of the barracks day in, day out. In that process, the damn barracks became porous and susceptible to attacks. And in the course of time, several heads of state have been sacked by soldiers who planned and executed their coup from within the barracks. Dodan Barracks was both a highly sophisticated and highly protected enclave, but ironically, it was highly susceptible and could easily fall to attack because most of the attacks were planned and executed from within the barracks. Babangida was aware of this reality about the barracks, but he had his own strategy which worked for him for several years. There were pockets of attempts to topple him, but none of these attempts shook him like the attempts by Major Gideon Oka and his associates in April 1990. Gideon's coup was the coup that almost took the life of Babangida. The date was 22nd April 1990. It was on a Sunday. It was at about 1.40 or 1.45 a.m. Nigerian time, a time when many people had gone to bed. Dodan Barracks, the most fortified government institution at the time, was attacked by a group of army officers whose mission was to remove Babangida from power, dead or alive, and effect a change of leadership in the country. The coup plotters gained access into the barracks and took strategic positions. One of their major targets was the residence of General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida. The residence came under ferocious attack and almost every part of it was destroyed by random shooting by the coup plotters. The attack was so ferocious and intense and the bedroom of the head of state was almost completely destroyed and the coup plotters thought that Babangida had been killed by the gunfire. Unknown to the coup plotters, Babangida and members of his family had been ferried out of the building by Lieutenant Colonel UK Bellu, who was Babangida's ADC at the time. It has been reported that at the time the coup plotters gained access to the barracks, UK Bellu was sleeping in his quarters, which was directly opposite the residence of the head of state. It was the sound of the gunfire that woke him up. 
how UK Bello breathed the earth to cross over to the residence of his master to move him and his family to safety remains a mystery till today. Babangida and his family were ferried across the fence and taken to safety in the neighborhood. It is reported that Babangida and his family were taken to the house of one of Babangida's friends outside the barracks. Babangida was safe, so also were members of his family. But Babangida and his wife, Mariam, would never forget the experience of the said date. Their body and souls were terrified beyond description, having come face to face with death. Having secured the safety of the first family, Yuke Bello returned to the barracks. His mission was to engage the coup plotters, chase them away, and take over. Hello and welcome to the channel. Informative, ain't it? <laughs> but we're just getting to the good stuff. Before I continue with the video, ever wondered what's in the villa that makes President want to live and die there? Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida Haibibi spent eight years as head of state at Asurok. He pledged at different times in his regime to return power to the people, but he never did. Somehow, he always found a way to dribble himself out of the maze of his own mendacity. I remember during his regime, there were rumors that some forces of torpitude were egging him on in his despotic drive. These people were also said to ensure a daily sufficient supply of marabout to the presidential villa for spiritual bunk ray. That IBB annulled the June 12, 1993 presidential election was said to be because of this shadow clique. IBB was eventually forced out of power by citizens whom he had had a Maradona run on in the field of tyranny. Then came Sonny Abacha, who claimed he wanted to restore order in the country, after which he would give way for a democratic government. Abacha drank from the hypnotic chalice of Asa Rock and became Nigeria's most brutal dictator. It was also rumored at the time that he was being puppeteered by the psychophantic voices in his court. Abacha wanted to be life president, but God had another plan for him. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.